Now let's face it, the world our kids are facing is vastly different from the one we grew up in. Bullies are no longer just in schools, they're on social media. The news is filled with stories of violence in the classrooms. So how can parents help their children navigate these troubled waters? Dr. Kevin Lehman has the answer. New York Times bestselling author and psychologist Dr. Kevin Lehman believes that our children are living in one of the most challenging times in history. With reports of school shootings, racial violence, cyberbullying, and terrorism, our children are looking to us for answers. In his book, When Your Kid is Hurting, Dr. Lehman helps parents guide their kids through tough times, making them even stronger. Well, Dr. Kevin Lehman is here with us now, and we welcome you back to the 700 Club. What a wonderful book. I really enjoyed reading this. Thank you. That's a, a needed book. It's the only book I've ever said publicly a parent must read. Yeah, it, it really is true. Every parent, I think, wants to be able to converse freely with their children, but sometimes, even when kids are very young, if it's something that's deep and a wound or they're not old enough to know how to express it, then teenagers shut down sometimes. How do you get your child to talk to you about things? Well, number one tip is don't ask questions. <laughs> I mean, parents love to ask questions, and you women, I mean, you love questions. <laughs> and here's the it's irony. It's our specialty. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> But here's the irony. Husbands and kids share commonalities. Husbands hate questions. So do kids. Husbands hate the Y word. So do kids. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to a kid when he comes home from school? How was your day today, honey? Fine. What'd you do in school today? Nothing. Don't do that. <laughs> but if a kid says something, you can say, you could say, tell me more about that. Now, tell me more about that's a command, but it doesn't put up the defenses. Yeah. So, so if being you, good listeners. If you can it? listen without judgment, Mm -hmm. we'll a kid see. comes through the door, you know it's a bad day. You can just make a statement like, wow, I can tell it's been a rough day. Hey, this may not be the time or place, but if you want to talk, I'm available. And that teenager especially might come into your bedroom at 1030 at night, sit on your bed, and won't shut up. I love the way you broke things down to out there issues and in their issues. Talk right. a little bit about that. Well, kids see things. They see volcanoes in Hawaii. They see hurricanes. They see devastation, uh, tsunamis. Uh, and a four, five, six-year-old kid, I'm not sure they should be looking at screens to begin with in general. But they see it, so you have to deal with it. And they're, they're afraid. And sometimes you have to just, I call it rearranging their State of the Union address. Well, you might say, honey, that happened so far away. We'd have to get in the car. Yeah. We'd have to drive four days, spend four nights in hotels. But be proactive. Uh, the Red Cross will accept your donation. Operation Blessing. I was talking up a storm yesterday to a guy on an airplane about what they do Good with the 700 you. Club through Operation Blessing. Yeah. And write that check and let the kids see that you care about other people. Yeah. But the outdoor, the out there experiences. You have to be able to tell a kid, hey, we're here. Grandma lives down the street. Your little goldfish, Gill, is doing fine, swimming along great. So you reframe it for the child, Terry. What about the in there things? Well, best friends forever. You got three little girls. They're 11 years old. They hold hands. You've seen them. Yep. <laughs> They're three little peas in a pod. And all of a sudden, your 11 year old is on the outside looking in. Yeah. And she doesn't want to go to school. What do you say? I know what I'd say. I'd say, honey, I'd feel just like you. That's got to hurt to be turned on like that by your best friends. But you are going to school tomorrow. But let me give you some advice, and you can accept this, reject it, modify it. And I'm 30 years older than you are. I'm like farmer's insurance. I know a few things because I've seen a few <laughs> things. Uh, I want you to go in the cafeteria tomorrow and look for that student that's by themselves. I want you to sit across from them introduce yourself, and you'll probably have to carry the conversation because chances are that kid's sort of shy. But at the end of the day, I want you to come. We'll have a little talk about how you felt about what you did with that kid who was by himself. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what I'm preaching, so to speak, is, hey, you have to teach your kids to run toward the fear. Do not yeah. develop the victim mentality. Mm -hmm. And parents today want to snowplow the roads of life for kids. I just did an op-ed for Fox News in New York. And they tell me the readership on it was just sky high about not, they call it, somebody called it a lawnmower parent, like a helicopter parent. Yeah. And I said, every kid has got to learn that they need to shovel some snow. Yeah. 
even if they live in Florida or Southern California. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no easy way. You, your kid needs psychological muscles. The only way they're going to get that is by them facing those problems. So, yes, yeah. you have your back, your kid's back. You can even stand next to them. I don't care. You just can't be in front of them. Yeah. Talk a little bit about some of the fears our kids face. Well, the kid goes out to school today. Most kids are fearing that today's the day I'm going to be picked on. Yeah. I'm going to be singled out. So they fear rejection, the uncertainty of the day. My little granddaughter came to me and she said, Grampy, Grampy, I have 18 likes on Facebook. Isn't that good? I said, Adeline, tell you the truth, it's not that good. Do you really want everybody to like you? And she thought about it. She was 13 years old. I said, you know what? If that's your goal in life, to everybody like you, you're going to live a miserable life. Wow. It's more important that you learn about who you are, what you stand up for. And this kid, I mean, she's done it. I've watched my, she's, yeah. she's marvelous 13 year old kid, but they need a little coaching sometimes to be who they are. Well, and sometimes Kevin with the in there things, you know, kids face the death of a parent or a grandparent, divorce, abandonment by one parent or the other. You say in the book that grief can, can actually be a positive or have a positive impact. All things that are living are going to die. Yeah. From the little goldfish to your puppy dog to you name it. Mm -hmm. And it's important to share tears with kids and yeah. realize we grieve differently. But anybody who's experienced grief knows grief comes like the wave off the ocean, hits you at the most inappropriate times. So if you're grieving and you just lost your dad or your sister or whatever, and the kids see you, your tendency is to shut down and don't let the kids see what's going on. The better is to let the kids see it, hold each other, and talk about the special moments you had with that person. What are some of the things you just mentioned, one of them, but some of the other things we do wrong in dealing with our kids and life? Well, that goes back to why I think everybody should read this book. We tell kids, oh, it'll be okay. Yeah. Really? How do you know it's going to be okay? And your 15-year-old saying, hey, you're not the one they're calling pizza face at yeah. school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So saying to a kid, and again, the suicide rate among teenagers up 170% in the last couple wow. of years. So you just have to listen without judgment. Yeah. And that's the difficult part because most of us as men want to fix things and most women want to go right in there and you're such great wordsmiths, mm -hmm. you want to talk and talk and talk rather than just sit back and listen. Yeah. Well, you are a great wordsmith, <laughs> I want to say. Read the book, loved it, very insightful. And I, I want to just echo what you said. Every parent needs to read this. It's great advice. It's Kevin's latest book, When Your Kid is Hurting. And really, you need to know every child's going to be hurt somewhere, some way, somehow. So arm yourself, parents. Thank you for being with us. Always great to have you here. My pleasure. Sound, sound advice.